Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of Mini Rogue, roguelike micro game. But before I begin, please turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that if I make any rules goose, you know what they are. And I've played a few games on Rado's channel at this point, but if you still don't know who I am, my name is Shay Parker, and if you go to the April or May roundup videos, Rado's going to tell you all about who I am and why I'm here. But what he won't tell you is how much I enjoy roguelike video games. These are games like uh, uh, FTL or Slay the Spire, or Everspace. Some of my favorite games in, are in that genre, and they're exemplified, or they're uh, uh, the good examples of them are games with. Uh, randomly generated content. Usually there's an RPG kind of leveling system. You get stronger in some way and there is permanent death, which means that if you are in the middle of a run and your character dies, you're done. You got to start over, but usually you've learned something or maybe you've unlocked something along the way. Of course, these are video games. So why am I talking about them here? Well, that's because Mini Rogue is trying to give you the same experience of a roguelike in a micro card game. I've got this dungeon which is randomly set up by these cards. I'm going to be going from top left to bottom right. Uh, I'm going to be going down these various floors, facing off against bosses, eventually trying to face the final boss, Og. Og's remains right here, this big skeleton man with very large knives. And if I can do that, then I win the game, but it's not going to be easy. Now, who am I? Well, today I am playing as a mage. A mage with a staff so powerful it trips out my green screen. Um, but I, I maybe I wasn't going to play a mage. I could have played a, played as a rogue. There are other characters you can play as. Uh, this is a prototype version, so I don't have all the cards. There's going to be, I believe, four different classes you can be. Maybe even more with stretch goals. So you have a lot of options as to what you're starting with, and that also affects your uh, starting setup. I've got my little character sheet right here. I've got a lot of cubes on it, so I'm not going to pick that up, but I've got an extra one to show you, that it gives me like XP, armor, hit points, gold, I've got a bag of food that I need to keep eating, and some room for potions. So let's jump into this dungeon and see how it works out. I start in the top left, so I'll flip the card, and I am in a tomb. So what these cards will show you is a couple of things. Uh, on the top right, it shows you uh, what kind of uh, challenge you're facing, and on the bottom, it'll show you what the results are uh, when facing them. So, in this tomb, I'm going to be rolling my character die, my character dice, and the dungeon dice. So, let's see. Because I'm level one, I'm only rolling one character die, but as I level up, that might get better. So, let's see how I do. All right. Now, I rolled a four, which is, you know, okay, but it's not exactly what I wanted. If I had gotten a six or a five, that would be considered a, a success. However, this tomb doesn't really need me to succeed. Uh, I'm going to be encountering something. What the tomb lets me do, if I succeed, I can alter the number that I get uh, by up to one or negative one. But here's the thing, it's okay that I uh, that I didn't succeed because I rolled a one, which in this case gives me some holy water. So I just take a little a little purple cube, put it on my holy water section, and that's going to help me later on when I, uh, if I get poisoned or if I get cursed. Holy water will help me uh, cure my afflictions. So once I've finished the uh, challenge of the first card, I flip over the cards on, uh, that are below and to the right. So I have uh, figured I've discovered a bonfire and I've discovered a monster. Monster to the right, that means I need to fight them. Uh, if I fight it, it will probably hurt me, but I might get some experience from it. I'm on level one, so it tells you that I'm facing a giant spider. This is clearly a spider. It's very giant. That's why it doesn't look like one. Um, so I'm playing a uh, single player game. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is a solo game, but you can play it with a second player. Um, but primarily, it's a solo game. And uh, every time it attacks me, it's going to deal two damage. But if I can defeat it, I will get one experience. Thing is, if I go over to this bonfire, there's nothing bad here. I can uh, search for food. I've already got full food, uh, as you can see right here. Um, or I can hone my weapon, which gets me one experience. Or I can heal uh, two hit points. Now, uh, I am at the beginning of the game, but I can still heal up a little bit more if I want to. I just start about halfway through. But I think I can go for the monster and maybe get one experience uh, and maybe take some damage, or I can go for the bonfire and hone my weapon, get one experience, easy. So I'm gonna do that, it's a nice, easy decision. So now that I'm on this space, I flip over 
the next two cards. I've got a trap down here, which is a little bit difficult, especially when you're a low level. Or I've got this armory. The armory is, if I can succeed, uh, it's going to get me these things called feats. Basically, I'll get uh, a weapon, and it'll give me free uses of feats. Feats are going to help me out in combat. So I think I want to go to the armory. Now, um, I need to roll a success in order to actually pick something up. So I'm going to roll some dice. Again, I didn't get the success. And now, in this scenario, for the armory at least, I needed to roll a success in order to get one of these. And the black uh, die would have told me what I would have gotten, which would have been this fair longsword. It's a little bit, a little bit small print, but um, uh, the top three are one, two, three, and then four, five, and then six, in case you can't see it. Unfortunately, I didn't, uh, I didn't get that, but um, I didn't get hurt either. Armory is a good place to go. Now I reveal the next round of things. I got another trap and I've got another shrine. Again, traps are difficult, but this trap, if I succeed, I can get some experience. I do really want to get experience because the sooner I get to level two, which is in uh, six XP points away, XP points, um, XP experience points uh, away, then I'll start rolling another character die, which means I'll have double the chance for success. So I do want to level up soon and that can get me some experience, but the the danger from these traps is, can be pretty rough. If I fail, uh, I can lose a bunch of health, I might get poisoned, um, it's, it's rough. And succeeding is pretty difficult. So right now, I think I'm actually gonna go to the shrine. Now the shrine has an interesting option. I don't have to roll any character dice. Uh, I'm just rolling the dungeon die and I'm seeing what I get. There are you know, those six options. The first three are bad, the second three are good, but because it's a shrine, I can give an offering. I can pay one gold by sliding my gold tracker down one, and now I'm adding one to the value of my dungeon die, which means that I'm more likely to get some of these good options. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna roll. Whoop, oh no, ah, technical difficulties. All right, I rolled a one, which is not great, but uh, it's a good thing that I paid that gold because rolling a one without having done that would have been real bad. I would have gotten cursed and poisoned. But now I just get cursed. So I don't take any damage or anything, but we're counting this one as a two. And I get cursed, which means every time I'm rolling one of my character dice, I'm also going to roll this cursed dice. And the cursed die is going to lower the value of all of my dice by one. So it's making me... It's making me a little bit uh, less powerful, which is not, not great. But again, I have this holy water. So at any point I can spend the holy water, get rid of the curse. Of course, there are other things in the dungeon that might do that for me. So I'm not gonna do it just yet. I'm gonna see what happens. So now I get to the exit, or I'm actually going deeper into the dungeon at this point. And when I get to here, as it shows in the bottom, I can, uh, I have to lose one food. I a little munch on a little food as I'm going down. Um, this uh, symbol shows that I am refreshing my character abilities. Now, I haven't used any yet, but uh, as a mage, I have two character abilities I can use. I have a Conjuration, which uh, can give me some of these powerful combat potions that I can use for free, or uh, I have Foresight. I can reveal up to three of the dungeon spaces. So if I wanted to plan my route a little bit better, I can use that. And then whenever I use my ability, I flip this over, and when I get to the end of this room, I flip it back up. And then I delve deeper into the dungeon, which means I take all of these cards. I'm gonna shuffle them up with all the ones and the ones I didn't use. I'm gonna lay out another set of eight room cards. I'm also gonna go forward one more space in the dungeon. And because I'm at the last room of this floor, I'm going to flip over the boss that I'm gonna be facing. I'm gonna be facing the Spider Queen. Spider Queen is gonna be a little tricky. So I know ahead of time what I'm gonna be facing. I've got this uh, monster, it's got 12 health, it's got two, uh, it does two damage every time it attacks me. Um, and you kinda of can't see it, because again, it's cl clipping through the green screen a little bit. These green things that are, it's the exact same color as my green screen, but that's okay. Um, it's going to poison me. And poison 
is a, a little tricky as well. It's kind of like the um, kind of like the curse die, except whenever I roll it, I lose one health. Both of those are bad. I don't want either of those things. So let's see if I can't get rid of them uh, pretty soon. All right, I'm back at the shrine. Uh, now this messed me up last time, but I can't get cursed twice, so I feel pretty okay. Um, I don't really. What did I have? I had two gold. Um, I don't really want to spend another gold on this, so I'm just going to see how it goes for me. And I got a six. Six is pretty good. Um, on the shrine, a six means that I just heal one hit point. Now, if I got a four or five, I actually would have done a little bit better, but uh, six is good too. So, I'm gonna heal one, and I'm going to reveal the next few cards. So I've got a merchant here. Now this is kind of why I didn't want to spend all of my uh, all of my gold on the shrine because there's a merchant that I can go to where I can buy a few things. Like I can spend one to just increase my health by one, I can spend two to get more food, or this little symbol right here is uh, saying that I can cure all afflictions. So if I want to hold on to my holy water and, and just pay two instead, I can get rid of that curse. Uh, it can also do another thing. If I had a lot more gold, maybe I could increase my armor, uh, get some more potions. I could also sell some potions if I want to. I could, hmm, interesting. I could sell my holy water for three gold. That would give me five, which would be enough to give me some armor, but then I would still be cursed. I don't really want that. Um, the other option is this crow. The crow, if I have some extra food, I can feed the crow, and then I'll hold on to this, and this will give me some extra skills, kind of like my mage skills. So I can reveal, uh, replace a revealed room with a random unused room card. So I'd used one of these and replace it. That actually would pair pretty well with my mage ability, revealing cards ahead of time. Or the bird's eye. Uh, I, after shoveling my room deck, I draw first, uh, I draw first two cards and insert them back into the deck as I see fit. So I could uh, take a look at some cards before I put them out. Both are pretty good. I do think I want to get rid of that uh, of this curse though, because that's really going to mess me up. So I'm going to go to the merchant. I'm going to spend two gold. I don't have any more gold left, but get rid of that curse, and now I don't have to deal with it. Um, so I'm in this room. I'm going to flip over uh, some cards. Okay, this is actually a pretty good start for this run. I haven't faced any monsters or any traps so far, but that does make me a little bit nervous about these guys which means that I can go to this tomb. Uh, tomb is kind of a grab bag. You know, you might get you might get some holy water, you might get some gold. A rat swarm might eat your food. You might face a ghost. That's not great, but you might get a codex, gets you some experience, or you might find some food. Or I can go back to this armory. I think I kind of want to try the armory again. If I can get these, uh, I can get one of these weapons, that's really going to help me. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go back to the armory, roll some dice, oops, move me here. Ah, again. Did not get the success. It can be a little bit difficult to get successes when you're low level uh, because you're only rolling the one the one character die. That's okay though. All right, monster or bonfire. Uh, same choice as last time. I, I do kind of want to go to the bonfire, but I'm going to show you how combat works um, before I get to the spider queen. So I have faced. I'm facing this monster. It has six health. So I'm going to take. Uh, my little monster hit point tracker. I'm gonna put it at six. And fighting a monster is pretty simple. I am going to roll again, roll my character dice, roll the dungeon dice. And my character dice are the amount of damage that I deal. And then after I deal damage, the uh, monster is going to hurt me back based on the results of the uh, dungeon dice. But I've done very well. I got a six, which is exactly how much hit points it has. Uh, so I, I'm immediately going to kill the monster, which is great. Uh, I'm less I'm less worried about getting hurt now because I don't I won't. Um, but I want to show you that I uh, because I rolled a six. You see this like star around it is telling me that this is a critical hit. If I want to, I can roll this again and add whatever I whatever value I get to the die roll. So if I get you know a five, then that's going to be an eleven. But if I get a miss, that means the entire attack misses. I don't need to do that right now because I got that six, and that's just enough to, to kill the monster. So I'm going to take that result. The monster dies, and I get one experience for killing the monster. Still a little bit of ways away from getting uh, my, you know, getting uh, leveling up my character, but I'm doing okay for now. 
So now I'm facing the Spider Queen. This, this spider is uh, a little bit tougher. I'm gonna, see it's got 12 health, so I'm moving my HP tracker to 12 for this spider. It's also, every time it hits me, it's gonna poison me, but the rewards for killing it are a little bit better. So let's try our luck. I, oof, got another six. And this time, I think I do wanna use it. Um, it's gonna deal some damage to me, but I, I wanna kill it as soon as I can. So I get that six, I'm gonna roll it again. And, oh, another six. Wow, that, okay, that's that's all I need to do. I mean, I, I got 12 damage, I I knocked it out. Uh, but let's let's say, for example, let's just say I missed. You know, so I, I didn't do any damage to it. One thing I can do is I can use my mage's ability. I can use a potion of fire, frost, or poison for free. Now, each of these has different abilities. They're all listed on the uh, bottom of your character sheet. Um, but fire does seven damage right away. The frost stuns the enemy for one turn, so it's not gonna be able to attack me. And if I set up poison, that means it's dealing four damage to the enemy per turn. But all of those are really good. I think, I don't wanna get poisoned, but th as this fight goes on, I probably will. So I think I'm gonna use it as, as just a, uh, I'm gonna use it as a, a fire potion. So it just does seven damage to it. I didn't deal any because I missed. So I'm gonna take this 12 minus seven is five. So I'm moving it down a little bit. And now it attacks me. Oh no, what was it? Well, I don't know. I, I grabbed it when I wasn't looking. I think it was a two. So if the monster rolls a one, that's a miss. If it rolls a six, that's a hit and it ignores any armor that I have, but I don't have any armor at the moment anyway. Any other number, it just deals its normal combat damage, which in this case uh, is two. So I take one, two damage, and I am poisoned. So now I'm rolling my poison dice as, uh, along with the rest of the other dice. And now we just do another combat round. We're gonna keep going until one of us dies. I think I got the edge on this one. Oh, but because I used my mage ability, I do have to flip over my card. So let's keep going. I got another miss and it hit me. Well, that's not good. So I don't want to miss here. I really want to attack it. So what I can do is I can use a feat. I can pay two hit points or one experience point to re-roll any die that was rolled. Obviously I'm not gonna re-roll the poison die because I didn't get poisoned. Oh, you can't even see the poison die. Well, that's unfortunate. Man, green screen. <laughs> you're uh, you're not, not doing great for me today. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there, there was a, a, uh, uh, my poison die was, was no poison, um, which about half the, the symbols on it have poison, half don't. And I've got my, uh, my character die, which is a miss, and I think I want to reroll that. So I'm going to, uh, spend, uh, I can spend either one XP or, or two hit points. I think I'm doing okay hit point wise. It's gonna hurt me anyway, but I think, I think I'm think i okay with spending that. I really don't wanna spend XP since I, I haven't earned that much this turn. So I'm gonna take this white die, I'm gonna roll it again. Hopefully I got a five or a six. Let's see, yes, got a six. So that's enough that I need to bring this down to zero. Because I killed it, it doesn't get to take its action. Spider Queen is dead and, oh, as a reward, I get two experience and I get to roll on the rewards table, so this card right here. And I just roll the black die and now I get to choose. So I got three, which means I get either a poison potion or I get two experience. I think I want that experience. I'm a mage, I'm pretty good at, I can poison things whenever I want. I'm not worried about that. Um, so I'm gonna get the two experience for the rewards and the two experience for killing the spider, which gets me up to six. Now I'm level two. So as level two, I'm gonna be rolling a second character die. All right, let's, uh, now I've reached the end of, the, uh, of that floor. So I am going to delve deeper. Pay one food as always. I move down on my track. I'm gonna grab up all of these cards and let's make a new dungeon. So flipping, the, er, putting these out. Now I don't get to see what the next, um, what the next boss is until I get to the last room of each floor. There's a little like symbol right there that's showing you that. So I don't know what's gonna come up just yet, 
um, revealing that. But I'm back at the armory. See, now I have two white dice. So I think I'm going to be doing a little bit better uh, trying to get one of these weapons. So let's see how I do. Uh, trying to get this, trying to get some weapons, rolling some dice. There's a poison die in here, I promise. I got poisoned, which I don't like, um, but it's okay. Because I succeeded, and boy did I succeed. So, because I got a two, I get one of these rusty daggers, which just gives me one charge. So I'm going to take this armory tile. I'm going to uh, grab uh, another cube. Well, I'll grab this one for now and put it on the one. That means I have one free charge of the feet, the same thing I used against the Spider Queen. And unfortunately, I also got poisoned, so I lose one hit point. I'm actually, ooh, I, need, I should use this holy water to get rid of it, but I, I didn't. So that is where we are at the moment. Now, revealing these guys, oh, I've got that crow again, but I'm running a little low on food. And if you don't have food, when you go deeper in the dungeon, you're gonna lose three hit points. I really don't wanna do that. So I think I'm gonna go to the bonfire. Now there's a lot of things I can do. I can hone the weapon, but XP, it's gonna take a while to get me to level three. So I'm not thinking too much about that right now. I can search for food, which uh, I just talked about. I do need that, or I can heal too. And because of that poison, I think I wanna do the healing. So do that. And then keep going. Uh oh, I've got a monster and I've got a trap. See, this is a good example uh, of a time when I, I probably should have used my mage ability of uh, revealing up to three rooms. If I had done that before I chose to go to the bonfire, I would have seen that there's a trap here, there's a monster here. Instead, I should have gone to the crow. Maybe I could have gone around them, but I wasn't smart enough to do that. So I've got to face a monster or a trap. Now the monster has gotten stronger because I'm on floor two it's now using the second level. So it's a skeleton soldier, just like it chose. And these are gonna do more damage, gonna have more hit points, but it's also worth more, uh, it has a higher reward. The trap stays the same, no matter what dungeon I'm on. And, uh, but except for the fact that sometimes these uh, penalties scale, there's a little like staircase here, and uh, the damage that it does um, scales of, to, to what floor you're on. So I'm on the second floor, so this would deal two damage to me. Or I could lose two food if I face the rat swarm. I don't like the idea of that, but one of these successes is gaining armor. And armor is very, very good. Or I can gain a perception potion, which just automatically lets me succeed on a skill check. So I think I'm going to try it. I'm going to go up against the trap, and I don't want to be rolling poison anymore, so I'm just going to use my holy water, and I'm going to get rid of this poison die. Put it back over there. So I've got my, my trap that I am facing and I wanna roll some dice and see how I do. Yes, I succeed. Um, so either of these would be a success. Getting two of them doesn't you know, double succeed for me. It's just, you know, just nice. They're just flexing at that point. So I rolled a four, which means uh, I go through the acid mist, but I uh, uh, come out with even stronger armor, which is actually what I really wanted more than anything else. So I get to move my armor up one space. Now anytime I attack a monster, as long as it doesn't critically hit against me, I'm gonna reduce the damage it deals me by one. And if I can get that armor up even further, that's gonna be that's gonna make me really well protected. I'm a mage. I'm I'm an armor mage. That's how I played Skyrim actually. Whenever I played Skyrim, I did magic, but I also had a shield. Um, which was an interesting way to play. But anyway. Uh, so now I only have the one option for this place. So I show up, I see a, sh a shrine. Shrines are okay, um, but I don't have that holy water anymore. So I, ooh, but I don't have any gold either. Well, I, so I can't spend gold at the shrine. So I'm just gonna have to see how it goes. Got my shrine, got my dungeon die. I get a six, that's pretty good. Again, it's not the best thing. Four is actually uh, the best thing for a shrine, but six gets me uh, one, one heart. And I am at the end of this room, which means I need to spend one food. I can flip over my mage, but I haven't used the ability. So that's all well and good. Move forward, which means I get to reveal the next boss monster. And I'm delving even further into the dungeon. And the one thing that I haven't seen so far is treasure. There's a treasure chest in here. And it would be nice if I found one of these, but I haven't yet. Because every time you uh, make a dungeon, you put some cards uh, over uh, just out of the game, <clears throat> which makes it <clears throat> sorry 
makes it so that you know uh, every time you to you go down a room you don't know exactly what you're gonna get and if you get more things like you know the armory if you get the um the treasure chests you're gonna do pretty well sometimes you don't you face a lot of monsters and you get hurt um i'm doing okay so far i'm gonna have to face the king's protector oh. so the thing about the king's protector this boss that i'm going to face is that in the damage there's a little symbol that says that it breaks through armor every time it attacks it ignores armor which is not what i want because i just got this armor it was going to protect me it's going to protect me from the boss but <clears throat> that's just not the case so i think i'm going to hold on to, I, a lot of times what i tend to do is i hold on to my mage ability until i get to the the boss you don't need to do that um you definitely can uh, use it, especially on on floors before you get to the to, to that floor's boss. But it, it's just a you know a habit I have. Oh, starting off with a monster. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a habit that I have just to you know I always want to protect myself. Uh, I feel like they're they're the most useful abilities, and so I want to save them for that. But sometimes you really need to to save yourself. I'm doing okay for now though. So I've got this monster. It is a goblin warrior, just like it looks like. It's got nine health. Move this up to nine. Oop, nine. And it's going to deal four damage every time it attacks. But if I defeat it, I get two experience. So let's see how well I can do. Um, rolling some dice. So it's going to deal damage to me. I've got this five and a two, which means I'm going to deal seven damage. Um, yeah, that's. That's close. I, if I just dealt a little bit more damage, so I could spend my mage ability, do a little bit more damage, kill it before it attacks me. I don't want to take four damage, but I do have that armor, so it's really only three. I, I think that'll be fine. I, I can definitely kill it next round. Um, so I'm going to take, I'm going to deal seven damage to it, move it from nine to two, and I'm going to take the hit. Uh, anyway, again, two through five is just a normal hit, so it deals four damage to me, but I have the one armor, so I only take one, two, three damage. And now I'm going to attack it again. All I need to do is two damage. That's just any, if any of these white dice come up as a success, whoa, I got scared for a second, um, then that would have been bad. But I deal three damage, which is just enough to defeat the monster. And uh, gets me two experience. So experience is great because it levels you up, but it also can be used on those feats. I could have used a feat. Um, with uh, that rusty dagger that I had, but I don't feel like I need to. Again, I kind of want to save it uh, for going up against the final boss. So we've got the crow and we've got a trap. The trap, it, it will hurt me if I fail the trap, but if I succeed, I can get some experience. Experience is good, but there's also this crow. I think I'm gonna go for the crow because I'll be able to replace a revealed room with a random unused card. I think that's the one that I'm going to want to do. But in order to get the crow on my side, I got to feed it some food. And I'm out of food, which means I'm going to need to get some food uh, if I want to succeed. I'll put this right here. Um, all right, I've got two cards in front of me. There's a monster, there's a bonfire. I do need that food for going forward. So definitely going to go uh, search for food. Get me one. I've got one space left. Merchant. But I don't have any gold. So. Facing up against a merchant is not that good. Uh, this maybe isn't the best use of it, but I'm actually gonna just use that crow right away. And uh, so now I take this merchant, I'm gonna put it back, and I'm gonna randomly take one of the other two cards that I didn't have here, and pff, it's a trap. Uh, of course it is. That's, I mean, that's on me. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done that, but you know, I was, hoping, I was hoping for the treasure. I haven't found a single treasure chest this entire run. Uh, okay, got a trap. Same one as last time. Hey, maybe I'll get some more armor that the King's Protector will cut right through. Um, let's see how I do with this. Hey, I got a success. And I got a six, which means that I get a Perception Potion. Uh, perception Potion is going to allow me, if uh, whenever I use it, Perception Potion will let me automatically succeed on a skill check. So if I face a trap again, I don't even have to roll these white dice. I can just roll the black die and I'll get uh, whatever the success is. I think that's a really good thing to have. So that, you know what? Maybe the crow didn't, maybe the crow uh, knew that I could handle the trap. So he, he took me there on purpose. And now I've got the King's Protector. This is the boss battle for the second, I don't need that there, um, for the second floor. Although it's, it might not be for the second floor. The Most of the uh, boss cards get shuffled and so, 
This could have been the first floor, could have been the second. That's why it's got these different level markers on it. So it's got 16 health. Let's put that up there. And it's going to deal four damage and it's going to ignore my armor. So it was great that I got the armor, but for this fight at least, it's not going to be a big deal. Uh, but if I can defeat it, three XP and another reward. So let's see how well I do. I'm probably going to want to use my mage ability. I mean, there's no reason not to because um, I know it's going to get refreshed at the end of this. So let's see. Oh, but I can use uh, attack potions kind of before or after I roll the dice. It's, uh, it's all a matter of just when I want to use them. So I got um, one miss and one six and a four. Now I've got that rusty dagger. I've got one free feat that I can use. So I'm going to spend that and re-roll this miss. Maybe I can get something a little bit better. Uh, hey, double sixes. So I've got two critical hits right here. That's 12 damage. It's pretty good. That's most of the way towards to, towards killing this guy. Um, but it's not all the way. So I'm going to take one of these. I can do them one at a time. I don't have to do them right away. Or I don't have to do them both at the same time. I'm going to take one of them, and let's see if I can add on some numbers. And hopefully I just won't miss. Uh, three. Perfect. So 12 to 15. Oh, I'm one shy. Let's see if I can do it. I'm going to roll this last die. If I can get, as long as I get anything that's, uh, anything that's not a miss, I'm going to beat uh, this King's Protector, and it won't deal four damage to me. And I'm at seven, so four is a lot. Uh, let's see if I can do it. Uh, yes! Uh, can you see it? Four. Okay. Did it. I did uh, enough damage. Gets it all the way to dead. I have defeated the King's Protector. Get three experience. One, two, three. I get a reward. Rolling on reward. Tracker. I get a six, which means I get a perception potion or one armor. I already got a perception potion. Can't have two of the same potion. So I'm going to grab that armor. That's going to be even better. I've never had two armor at once before. That's that's pretty that's pretty good. And especially going in deeper. I mean, like, as you can see, these monsters, they hit pretty hard the deeper you go. So uh, that is the end of floor two. And I move on to floor three. But I think that's a good uh, example of mini rogues gameplay. So I'm going to leave it there. If you want to check out the final thoughts for this video, check out that I in the top right corner or check out the link in the show notes in five, four, three, two, one. Bye-bye.